Eat, Pray, Love. For those of you who have read the book, skip the film. For those of you who have seen the film, please read the book as you are missing so much more. I first read the book while sitting on the shores of Maria. A good friend had left it there specially for me to read. At the time I read the story in the same vein that I read most of the books there, as an entertaining yet moving story. It is only ten months later that I realise I am living my own version of it. Like the book, when I look around me I have everything I have strived for. I have a house I rent out, a second house that I live in, a grown family who are independent, happy and successful in their fields. I have a second family who will love and support me, a husband who will do anything for me, a successful business that we both share, pastimes to keep me mentally and physically stimulated. And yet there are days when I too look in that mirror and ask, is this it? Unlike the book, I do not need to battle my way out of things to go in search of what is out there, and more importantly, what is in me. As I have said, I have the most understanding family going, and it is with their blessing that I begin, continue, my journey of discovery. This is also not the first time I have tried this. Eighteen months ago I sat in an airport wondering what on earth I was doing. I had given away everything I owned, save the twenty-eight kilos that I had just dragged through customs. I had walked away from everything I knew and was heading out to discover a lifestyle different from anything I had ever experienced. I returned ten months later a different person, and yet still not sure of what I had been looking for. Many of us dream of travel of packing a small bag and just walking away into the sunset. Escapism, dreams, desires. There are many reasons some of us do it, and even more reasons why some of us don't. Travel has been my ultimate running away since I can remember. I don't mind where I go as long as I go somewhere. I've called it exploration, deserve time out. Educational stimulus, cultural discovery, and yet every time I discover, experience, and eventually return, I found myself thinking, was that it? Like many, I don't actually know what it is I'm looking for. I know what I don't want each time I find it, but the fine specifics of what I do want still evade me. The law of attraction, the way of the universe, positive thinking, control your destiny, all these theories are wonderful workable and, believe me, attainable. Too many amazing things have happened to me over the years for me not to believe. A quick visit to YouTube can access some of the most stimulating talks by experts in the fields of positivity, and yet I still struggle to discover what it is that I actually want. In the closing scene of the film Titanic, the camera scans the room that our heroine is lying in. Pictures of her riding a horse, flying a plane, achieving so many things in the life that she was saved to live. My children left home the same year as the film's release, and in a moment of emptiness syndrome, I wrote down, as a Who Am I exercise, all the things that I had done over the years. Mother, motorbikes, parachutes, diver, cook, businesswoman, a teepee maker, horse rider, the list soon covered two pages of A4. Jack of all trades, master of none, became my motto. In every field I ventured into, I realized that I had been successful, in some things more than others. I have also, at some point, walked away from each experience. Yet I have no regrets, as they have all served a purpose in my life at that time. Each experience was special to the moment. Some experiences lasted years, and still bring pleasure. Some fulfilled fleeting moments of passion. Diving out of a plane with a parachute that I had packed myself being a classic example. I love parachute jumping. I trained first in my thirties, and then again in my forties. But unlike the thousands who absorb this hobby with a passion that fills their lives with ongoing pleasure, I discovered that even though it was wonderful, it wasn't quite what I had been looking for. Being there, done that, is beginning to haunt me. Beekeeper, self-employed, business entrepreneur, market store coordinator, earth mother, festival worker, hotel manager, nurse. My CV is most impressive. 
and so to the next stage of my life, the travel stage. Last year I spent ten months living on the island of Maria. The life was idyllic. I lived in the most amazing beach-fronted property, free from any bills. I sang in some of the top hotels in Maria and got paid. I dived at one of the world's most recommended locations. I discovered my father and a little more about myself. And yet that same thought came back to haunt me. Is this it? Is this all there is? And so I returned to Wales to look again. I got married, became a taxi driver, immersing myself in the business. I redesigned the house, set my Welsh life in order, and then sat down and thought, Is this it? And so I begin again. In my version of Eat, Pray, Love, I will begin with Pray. I arrive in India in a few days' time to travel through some of the most sacred sites. I will stay in Vrindavan, where Krishna spent his youth. I will travel to the Taj Mahal and bathe in the Ganges. I will visit Pushka, site of the great camel fair, which I do plan to miss by a week, where Brahmin dropped three lotus petals to form the three great lakes. I will travel from Delhi to the coastal town of Dwarka, stopping at temples along the way. What am I looking for? Like the book, at this stage, I don't actually know. But I do hope to find out along the way. <laughs>